Andrew Napolitano joining us right now with a, his legal analysis of all of this in terms of the president now saying he wants to invoke some kind of executive uh, order. I, I don't know what kind of executive order he has in mind. The one that Hillary Clinton suggested yesterday would have imposed a new meaning on the words of the statute that has certain exceptions for the background checks in it. So, mm -hmm. for example, if, if you got a background check to buy a gun and you gave it to me as a gift, you don't have to get a background check of me because you're not in the business of selling mm -hmm. guns. You're giving it to me a gift or it's okay. an occasional sale. She would define all transfers as requiring background checks. But background checks don't keep us safe. In Newtown, Connecticut, which she cited yesterday, and of mm -hmm. course in Roseburg, Oregon, the, the most recent of these, what do they have in common? Both of the killers were madmen. Both of the killers were certifiably, seriously mentally ill, but neither had a record of mental illness. So both passed a background check. Both lawfully acquired those weapons. Second thing they had in common was both of them killed in no gun zones. These are areas of public property where the local authority has decreed no guns. How could you declare no guns when guns are a fundamental right? That's not me saying it. That's the Supreme no, Court, Amendment. which said it twice. Mm -hmm. The Second Amendment means the right to keep and bear arms is a fundamental right of the same category of rights as free speech, free worship, privacy, and travel. So the government can't take a certain area, geographical area, and say you can't exercise your fundamental right in there. Couldn't do that with the First Amendment. It can't do it with the Second. You know, Judge, this was one of my first questions as this un all unfolded, because I'm thinking to myself, where's the security guard? Where's the armed security guard? Is there no security there on campus? Well, because it was a no-gun zone, no one, not even the security guards that work there, were permitted to have guns. How were people saved? A courageous U.S. Army veteran who was also a student put his body against a door. His body took seven bullets. He saved the people in that, his classmates in that classroom. He survived. But if he was allowed to have carried a gun, that creep who killed the one professor and the eight students would have been stopped long before he had completed the killing and long before the police got there. The police can't be everywhere. The police were courageous and brave and forceful and quick. But they can't be everywhere. What did you think when you saw the president say what he said there just hours I, after I, the tragedy I unfolded? Of, I thought of the one liner that his uh, chief of staff, Rahm Emanuel, who is now the mayor of Chicago, gave him. Uh, Never let a tragedy go to waste. So he immediately, while people were still bleeding, turned this into a into a political argument. That's the reason the mayor of that town and the police chief of that town have basically said, please don't stop here when you're on the West Coast on Friday. You're right. No, it was very, very distasteful. Judge, thank you so much. You're welcome.